So welcome back to the third session in VMware Cloud Director 101, uh, Core Concepts. And now we're going to talk about the allocation models that are available for you to provide to your, your customers today. So if you're doing things like a, um, an, a private cloud, or if you're doing things like a public cloud, or you want to offer you know, just VMs on demand, this is all possible in VMware Cloud Director. And Julian's now going to describe how that works and, and what type of uh, resources are exposed. So Julian, if you're looking at now we explained in the session before how to do different tiering in uh, the provider virtual data centers and offer that up to orgs. What sort of org VDCs can we offer and what sort of resources are available to service providers to start looking at the different services they can provide? Okay, so we have what we call allocation models and this is something you define when you're creating your VDC for the first time. So mm -hmm. a quick reminder, your VDC is a resource pool in vSphere fundamentally. So yeah. think about those characteristics of reservations and limits and allocations. So let me just quickly bullet point these up. So our first one will do pay as you go. So that's a nice simple one to start with. So this is your public cloud consumer VM as you go. Exactly. Right. Now the key to this as we talk about the allocation models is upfront reservation. That's the thing to remember here. And this is all about over commitment and, and guaranteeing resources. So pay as you go is the simplest of course. Um, it doesn't mean unlimited necessarily, although you can offer an unlimited virtual data center. In other words, you can let a customer create as many VMs as they like. But you've got to have the resource behind to support it. You do. Yeah. If you run out of the infrastructure, you're potentially in a bit of trouble there, yeah. especially when it comes to SLAs. So pay as you go, it's effectively you don't upfront reserve capacity in your platform. So again, think about resource pools in your cluster. Normally, if you create a resource pool and you set a reservation, those resources are now committed to the resource pool. Whether it's in use or not, it's committed. Mm -hmm. So with pay as you go, there is no upfront commitment. Uh, the only reservation that, that takes place is when the consumer in vCloud Director creates a vApp or creates a VM. Then the allocation is reserved. At so that point. if I create a VM, uh, do I get to specify what sort of size I want in pay go? Yes. Okay, yeah. so I create a VM with um, 8 gig, 2 CPU, um, and 100 gigabyte storage, and then goes and grabs those resources, and hopefully they're available here, but the moment I turn it on, it's going to give them to me. Yes, okay. so in an unlimited scenario, because of course you can set up limits, um, if the consumer tries to get those resources, they will get them, and it, it's a case of first come, first serve. Yeah. Not ideal in a shared platform scenario. Sure. Uh, and also, remember it's still vSphere, so we're talking about DRS, and that means under these um, circumstances of resource contention, it will try and give customers what they want. Of course, and that's one of the great value propositions of vSphere, which a lot of service providers don't actually use particularly, because they want to be sure, or maybe they're selling it to their customers in a, a very guaranteed SLA way, and they want to be sure they can keep that SLA, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And of course, if you have unlimited, that's a threat to your SLAs to meet them, especially as performance declines as your platform becomes overstretched. Yeah. So a uh, quick word of advice on that, set limits, monitor them, and treat those as your capacity planning check mark, if you like. As you see customers approaching their limits, that simply means you have to take action as a provider in the background. Uh, perhaps you'll free up resources that are no longer in use, or more likely will expand your platform and get extra revenue. So the advice here would be then, if I choose uh, an orange color to put up uh, a vRealize operations instance to monitor your vSphere infrastructure to under and the resource pools for the orgs to understand the utilization of the Pago infrastructure. So you might, given your customer a nice Pago resource pool, which they're using, yes. uh, dedicate to them, great for, for example, like a DevOps um, scenario where you've got developers who just want to rip up, rip down, um, don't need any, I mean, potentially you can un guarantee that that's you know it Absolutely. is pay go mm -hmm. um, but got to be sure your infrastructure can support it that's right cool okay so let's go to the next one um, the next one is reservation put simply when you define this org VDC, when you create the resource pool through vCloud Director, you are reserving the resources up front. So if I create an OVDC, 10 gigahertz CPU, 32 gig of memory, the resource pool is created to reflect that. Mm -hmm. That is a set allocation. So what does that mean? The moment I create it, within the infrastructure, those resources are now safeguarded. Mm -hmm. They cannot be reallocated. In other words, if I have 20 gigahertz in my cluster available and I go and try and create another two, I'll create the next one, but not the third, because yeah. the resources are just not in vSphere, okay. and that will be respected. 
So I think of it like going to a restaurant. You have a table reservation, which means it's it's, it's set up for you, and yeah. you can go and take. No one else is going to sell it. Absolutely. <laughs> and again, you can set the CPU limit, the the memory reservation on that. But the resources are up front. So remember, again, as a reminder, when we think about allocation models, we're actually thinking about commitment of the platform. So this is more like a, an offering then that you'd provide as, uh, you know, with an SLA and um, potentially like a private cloud reservation for their own usage, right? Yes, but the point is it's guaranteed. So yeah. the customer will always get the resources they're paying yeah. for. If the service provider is selling blocks of resource, it's guaranteed. Whether the customer uses it or not, it's carved out of the platform. Of course, of course. The uh, customer will have to pay for that extra luxury. Absolutely. I'd say that's a premium, certainly. Yeah. Okay, now what about a halfway house? Realistically, we're always looking for opportunities for extra margin and revenue and efficiency, of course. So allocation. So this is probably more likely to be used. This again is an org VDC you create and the underlying resource pool is created. But in this case, we create an upfront allocation for X amount of resource, say again, 10 gigahertz vCPU. Mm -hmm. In reality, we're not going to reserve all of it. We're going to reserve a portion. And that portion is down to you. So for example, I'll say when I create the org VDC, it's a 10 gigahertz allocation, which is a, a sort of a soft limit, a, a notional target. Um, but actually I'm going to reserve 50% of that because I think that my customer is only going to use about half at any one time. What does that mean? It means I have the 50%, so I've, I've set aside 5 gigahertz of vCPU in my platform, and perhaps I can sell the other 5 gigahertz. So you're um, guaranteeing them 5 gigahertz out of the 10 gigahertz allocation, but what you're saying is um, we, you would be able to burst up to 10 giga, gigahertz yes. when it's available. Precisely. Got it. Right. So this is more of a, a model for those who want to sweat the assets more, get more bang for your buck out of what you have down here. Exactly. Okay, but obviously this does have potential impacts for SLAs. If, you're, if you've sold them a 10 gigahertz, a gigahertz allocation model, they're expecting 10. Um, but the chances are, and this is what we see a lot of the time, that vSphere will handle this beautifully. Um, and you know, even when you're running at a very high capacity, you'll still be able to start workloads up with the correct forms because other workloads will be underutilized as well. There's exactly. always a balancing act to be had, right? Yeah, very well said. So it's all the magic, if you like, is being done in vSphere. All those same rules about DRS, that's still at play here. vCloud Director is simply driving it. So yes, when we get above that guarantee, if there does happen to be excess demand over the expectations of the service provider, then there'll be contention, DRS kicks in, and then the, the resources are shared um, so fairly. So the advice here would be, this is a great model, sweat the assets, start off with uh, you know, customers who potentially don't need or don't want to pay for this hard reservation. Again, monitoring is key here. Setting up your, your VROPS monitoring profile so you can get you know, an alert if there's consistent uh, breaching of the uh, reserved resource in that or VDC. Yes, absolutely, and you're right, monitoring is key to this. Because actually, if, if you're a service provider who has a long-standing relationship with customers, you'll be able to profile their usage, yeah. and you can tell what kind of workloads they have. So very typically, production workloads are very stable. They're not restarted, they tick along nicely, so you can get a good estimation of CPU and memory usage over time. DevOps is a little different. You might be standing up 100 VMs, doing something very quickly in a short space of time, and tearing them down. Yeah. So that's where you start to choose your allocation models carefully. And the other thing to point out is when it comes to allocating CPU and memory, you can do them separately. And the same works for reservation. So you could say, I'm going to allocate 10, giga 10 gigahertz CPU, reserve 50%, mm -hmm. but actually for memory, I'm going to reserve 85% because I know that's more costly for me when it comes into contention. And that's important for memory sensitive applications as well, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Great, that's really good. So um, to summarize then, a pay-go model where literally you can consume as much resource as you need. You set up the profile of the VM when you want to start the VM. Um, it will grab the resources. Hope you should keep an eye on the resources or set, set a limit on the resources on the resource pool. A reservation where you are hard allocating the entire amount of the resource, whether it's used or not. The allocation, which allows you more bangs for, bang for your buck, which is around I'm reserve, um, providing a reservation um, but I, I sort of providing a resource pool, but I'm only going to reserve a certain amount of it, a percentage of that resource pool, and I can uh, configure that via memory as well or um, CPU. Exactly. Got it. Right. One final point, very quickly, to talk about um, is who's doing the overcommitment. So if you're the allocator, 
you, the service provider, are deliberately overcommitting your platform underneath. You're the one with the strategy to overcommit. Yeah. If it's reservation, the customer has the ability to overcommit. So if they have their fixed 10 gigahertz of CPU, if they deploy, uh, say, 100 VMs and they're trying to demand 20, they'll still be able to run those workloads. Now the customer is overcommitting. So that's also a key part of thinking about strategy for running the platform. Got it, got it. Okay, and there is one more. Yes, this is relatively new. I think it came in the Cloud Director 9.7. Yeah, that's right. Flex model. So it has some of the benefits of the other models, so the ability to obviously set limits on CPU and memory, set an allocation of reservation for those as well, mm -hmm. but also you can have more fine-grained control. And combined with policies, it becomes even more powerful. So you can, so far we've been talking about allocating resources at the resource pool level. Flex lets you go down to the VM level as well. Right. So you can set those allocations per VM. Now this becomes interesting when you talk about the allocation models alongside policies which is the next part. Mm -hmm. So what that means is, and this is actually quite a good example to work with, we have these things called compute policies. So let's say, I, I'll put a different colour so it's clearer. So all VDC policies, you create them at the org level, and separately you'll create placement policies at the provider level. Right. So first of all, at the provider level, we have placement policies. This allows the provider, so not the customer, to create affinity groups. So if you want to pin certain workloads to hosts, you can do that. For licensing you, requirements exactly. or something. Yeah, 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 big demand for that. Yeah. Uh, so that's useful. And then you can make sure that the different clusters and hosts you have are used in the correct way, in the optimal way for you as a provider. Further up, you have the um, org VDC policies, the compute policies. Now this is where t-shirt sizing comes in. Right. So if you want to define, say, small, medium, or large for a given type of operating system, then you create a policy. In vCloud Director, there's always a default policy, so you'll always see something. If you go into the vCloud Director portal, try to create a new VM, um, you'll see those options. The service provider can customize them. They can create their own compute policies. And key to that also is tying back to an allocation model. So you can say, here's my compute policy for a large SAP HANA cluster. So you know what sort of offering the, the customer needs. They have to be quite large in terms of memory. Mm -hmm. Crucially, you know that it's memory intensive, so you'll probably want to allocate and reserve that yeah. up front. So you can say, as part of the compute policy, if the customer chooses large SAP HANA as the size, I know I have to assign um, workloads to this cluster here. So I can actually allocate to a um, compute policy at the provider level. Mm -hmm. Got it. And if these policies, um, sorry, just to make sure I understand, the org policy is applied at the org level, the provider policy is applied at the provider level. Are the provider policies possible to use in any of the other models? So you, you reference them back. So effectively, um, you it all starts with a compute policy. In a compute policy, you can create a mapping to an affinity mapping in your right. provider policy. Right. So you, the provider, stage the allocation of resources. You choose the right cluster for the right workload, and you create policies to reflect that. And then you can associate compute policy t-shirt sizes with the different cluster types if you want to. Got it. So this really gives me an option then to provide uh, more tiering in terms of t-shirt sizing more specialization in terms of operating system support and, and you know knowledge I can bring as a service provider around running those things. Yes. Um, and how's that presented to the customer? If, I, if I'm this tenant logged in here, I'm in my self-service -serv portal, how do I find these, these flex um, available policies for me to create my VMs? You obviously don't see the policies as, your, as the tenant, but what am I presented with fundamentally? So when a customer hits the portal and they log in, they see a dashboard of their org VDCs. So these are the virtual data centers that the service provider has given them. Yep. Each of those has a set allocation model. So one org VDC is one allocation model. So each virtual data center has its own characteristics in terms of allocation. In the naming scheme, the service provider may make it clear what product is being subscribed to. So maybe there's a high SLA and intense OVDC, and they can see that, and the naming convention will let them know. When the customer drops in, let's imagine for the sake of argument that there is a dedicated SAP HANA OVDC allocated to the customer. When they go to create the new host, sorry, the new virtual machine, they see the t-shirt sizes, and because of the offering defined by the service provider, they can see SAP HANA, small, medium, large, and behind the scenes in the policy, which are labeled, and um, you can see them in the naming schemes the service provider specify, this has to have a um, reservation model. So we'll say this is very high priority, so all of the resources is allocated up front. Right. Um, and that's all they see. So when they deploy to their OVDC, they see their SAP HANA workloads running. Uh, they understand from the SLA with agreed with the service provider what the reservation level is. Crucially, behind the scenes, 
the workload is running on these dedicated hosts. That bit the customer doesn't see, because remember, the cloud director abstracts everything below the line. Sure, they just see the workload in your VDC. Exactly. Got it. Great, so next time I think we'll look at the uh, workings of the UI then and from the tenant experience. All right, thank you. Very good.